what you're thinking. Aussie Mark, that doesn't look anything like a Becker BK-13. And you'd be right, it's not. It's actually a uh, Buck Nice Hoodlum. But it leads into the Becker BK-13 because I bought the little Becker with one specific purpose in mind, and that is to ride in this pouch on this knife as a backup detail type knife. So I just want to roll it in to give a bit of context on what I believe is this nice primary purpose of use. So I'll put that off to one side and we'll get into the, uh, the Becker. The reason I say I believe that's its primary purpose of use is a, it's just very suitable for that use, but if you look at the name of the knife, it's called a remora. Now a remora is a type of fish that latches on to bigger fish out in the oceans and um, it travels the world that way. This, is, this knife is intended to do the same thing. It's intended to be used in conjunction with a larger knife, such as a, a large survival knife like we've just seen there. And I think it serves that purpose and fulfills that use really very, very well. So into the knife itself, we'll just talk a few specifics about the knife. I'll just bring it up for a little bit of a, a close-up there. Um, one of the things that has really impressed me with this knife, and uh, especially at the price point, is the finish on it. You can see there, it's, it's really nicely polished up and shiny, beautifully finished knife indeed. So we'll talk a few specs on the thing. As I mentioned, it's made by K-Bar and designed by Ethan Becker. Ethan Becker is, of course, the gentleman responsible for such great knives as the BK-2, BK-7, BK-9, uh, those sort of survival knives. The steel used in this is 440A stainless steel. It's running a uh, two and a quarter inch blade or 57 millimeter blade, which is a hollow ground drop point type blade and very sharp out of the box. The weight of this knife, and I didn't weigh the little sheaf, it's just a plastic sheaf, so it wouldn't weigh much, but the knife, the weight of that is a mere 1.2 ounces or 35 grams in the metric system. So one of the reasons I like it for that backup use is really you don't even notice it's there. There's no weight in this thing. I mentioned the sheaf, plastic, um, nothing to get excited about, it's, it's just a, a sort of a finish type plastic I suppose, um, does, does its job, it's got a hole here which you can put some paracord through, um, decent quality retention is good on it, the retention on this knife is done by that little indent that you can see just there, and basically when you push the knife in, the guard goes up past that indent and locks into that portion there, and no rattle, and it's certainly not going to come out in a hurry. Um, sheaf obviously by nature for its design is of course ambidextrous, there's no fastening system, you could wear this as a neck knife if you wanted to, it's, I don't believe that's its primary purpose of use but certainly you could use it as a neck knife. Um, I've put a little piece of paracord, I've actually I've stripped out the, um, the core strands of this paracord just uh, and put that on there, now the reason I've done that is in its normal sort of state here, when you go to pull this knife out, you kind of have to hold it like this to pull the knife out, which I'm sure is perfectly safe. But to me, it just feels really wrong to basically have your fingers in line with that cutting edge as you're sliding the blade out of a sheaf. I'm just not comfortable with it. So that little bit of paracord that I've put there just allows me to slide a few fingers in, grab the sheaf down the bottom like that, and pull the knife out. And I haven't got any fingers along there. As I say, it's probably just paranoia, but um, you know, if the blade over time wore its way through that and you were holding it that way, that'd be pretty nasty. So just an idea there. Alright, on to the knife. As I say, very nicely finished. A few little blemishes and stuff there, but that's nothing to be concerned about. Overall, very good little blade. I'll do a quick cutting test on it. I've got some paper here somewhere. Sorry about that. Back here. If I'd been better organised, I'd have had the paper standing by, wouldn't I? But I wasn't. Well, me and cutting tests generally don't get along, but we'll give this a bit of a try. See how we go. And that's all I'm going to do. I am woeful at doing cutting tests, particularly once the video camera is rolling, but as you can see, nice and sharp. Test that's probably a little bit more relevant I suppose, I'll just bring in a little cutting board here. We've got a bit of paracord on hand and we'll just try doing a paracord cutting test on that one. I'll just get to have to rock that a bit on the belly of the knife it feels like to get that to cut through. I'm not doing a very good job of this test either. That went through quite easy, we might just try that again. I'm probably doing the knife a disservice here. Yeah, a little bit of pressure and a little bit of rocking on the belly and that's gone through there nice and neatly and easily. So the veg on it's really quite good. Um, I won't go on too much longer about this. I'm going to roll in at the end of this video um, a paracord wrapping just to show how that can be done or one of the ways it can be done on this knife. In conclusion on this knife, um, I was going to talk about the, the value. The price on this I paid was $18.95 US 
and I think that uh, for the quality of the knife you're getting it's outstanding value I think for its purpose of use which as I say for my money is as a backup survival situation type knife um, or possibly neck knife I think it's an excellent little blade and it, and it does a heck of a job for what it is all right so we'll roll that, um, that bit of footage in of the okay so we're going to have a look at our power cord wrapping a Becca BK13 and for this recipe we need two basic ingredients obviously we need a BK13 and we need some power cord and really that's all we need. So to start this what we're going to do is bring the paracord up through that back section of the skeletized liner and with the tag end we just want to sit it into that little forward cut out there. So just let that sit like that. And then you're going to reverse that around on the other side so the paracord is back up towards the front of the handle. Now the reason I've done that is that will give me you can see that video a little bit of thickness around that central part of the skeleton nice handle so when I wrap back I'll have a slight bulge in the middle which I think will uh, make for a nice comfortable handle so we just pin that there hold that in place and again hold it up here as well and we'll start wrapping and what we're going to do is bring the paracord back just to the, uh, to the rear of that little finger guard there so we'll just do it loosely at first so it doesn't move out of place we can tension it up a bit later and we'll just keep wrapping like so Let's turn that over. And now I've got that tag end underneath those coils so that won't go anywhere. And we'll just continue. What we'll do is we'll just wrap it this way. Turn the knife around. It's a lot easier. Once you've got it started, it tends to hold itself in place quite well. Let's just bring it back into frame. Okay, now, you can see there, it's still quite loose in places. So what I'll do is put that down against a hard surface, the point of that knife, and I'm going to push down on the upper piece of paracord towards the rear of the handle and you can see that it's giving me a lot more space to wrap into again and compress those down so we're going to go again and I should have mentioned I'm using 550 paracord here this is just an odd piece I had laying around um, this piece I've got is 920 millimeters in length um, that's not particularly by design or anything it just happened to be the length I've got laying around and it's probably just over the size you'd need for this job okay a little bit more just see how we're traveling here we go around again probably a couple more times there press that down okay that's where we're at at the moment you can see there that that's compressed up quite nicely and that's looking pretty good and that's the other side of it there so now the big trick is we're going to try and finish this off so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to hold that with my finger there i'm going to bring it just over the top i'm going to come back through the middle like that and then what we'll do is go back up through that loop there. So I've probably gone down a little bit too far here. I might just take one of those off. That'll give me a bit more to play with. Okay, so back through the middle. Up for our loop. And we're going to tie that off on the tang of the knife, the rear section of the handle there. Like so. I'm going to go around and do that again. So just get a bit of tension on that, like so. Hold that for your finger if you like. Again, back through the middle. And you've got a loop again, we're going to go back up through that loop, so we're going to double that knot up. And that's quite secure. I'll probably just space those little bits of line out again. Like so, just to neaten that up. And you see, that's not too bad for length. You could, if you wanted to, tie that off. It's Probably, uh, probably a little bit more length to put a knot in the back of that, but that's okay as it sits. And that's the resulting power cord wrap there. And that actually feels really, really good and really comfortable. And the only downside with having the power cord on these is that if we just bring the sheath back into shot here, it will not retain properly on that indent in the sheath. You can see there, if we try and put that in, normally it would sit like that. But because of the power cord, it won't quite go in. It's still firm, it's not going to come out. I wouldn't wear it as a, as a neck knife like that. But if you wanted to leave the power cord on and this is sitting in, in a knife pocket like I carry mine on, say, a bigger survivor knife, that wouldn't be any kind of issue for you. So that's just one way to, to do a power cord wrap. Um, there might be many, many others and probably much neater ways to tie off the end, but that's just one way that I've found to do it and it's, it's, it's quite good. Okay.
So anyway, that's uh, the review of the BK13, and I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed that. And uh, quite a good little knife, excellent value, um, I think. And um, you couldn't go too far wrong in using this as a backup knife on, on one of your survival blades. Thanks for watching, take care everyone, bye for now.